Well, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to everybody out there wherever you are in the world, and welcome to another episode of The Buddhist Biohacker. Our mission is creating conscious content for 1111D. We are, are creating the new media, and I am your host, Lisa Gunshore, as always, and I'm just beyond excited, beyond thrilled. I'm trying to ground myself to have with us today, Magenta Pixie. Thank you so much for being with us today. I mean, absolutely. You're, you're so heart-centered, and it's, I hope that you feel the heartfelt love that we have for you at, in our community and, and myself, and I'm just so happy to have you here. Oh, Lisa, thank you so much. And yes, I do feel that. I do feel that a lot. And I, I feel that with you. I felt that when I looked at your website, when you asked for an interview, that connection was just there. And um, you can't put your finger on it. It's an energetic, just knowing and a connection. And it's beyond this reality. But thank you. Thank you for asking me to do an interview with you. And I'm happy to, to be here with you. So thank you. <laughs> Oh, and how gosh. interesting! I just noticed you've got a, you've got a blue um, eye. It's it, the, the, so I'm wearing one. Look. Oh my that's, gosh, that's so that's amazing! The, that's supposed to be the evil eye or the protection eye or whatever word you give it. I bought this from a guy at um, a festival, and he knew so much about it. And he was giving me this, this huge spiritual um, ancient history. So I just noticed it on your. On your wall. Oh, wow. Well, you know, this, it's a great segue into how I want to start because this, okay. came, this came, this is the indigo eye and I painted it. I actually painted that myself. And um, this is how I got connected to you. And I want to share this with you so much. And I'm sure everyone who's listening wants to hear it too. But back in November, so, so you know, I, I've, I've worked, I've been working with the public since 2006, since I was 27. So I've been doing this work a while. Um, and in that, I've heard your name. So, you know, every once in a while, someone would say, oh, you should listen to Magenta Pixie. So I heard it, but it was not anything that I ever grabbed onto. And I have my, what my littlest calls our magical tubbies. <laughs> We get in a big salt bath with all the salts and one night I was soaking in my salt bath and just all of a sudden it just landed like get your phone and find Magenta Pixie. And so I did and this is back in November of this last year and the video that I pulled up so I found you I found you on YouTube and the video I pulled up was the crystalline Samhain the 1111 Stargate and I'm a Scorpio I was born November 21st so 11 and 11 11 has always been such a profound thing for me and so I listened to that video which was the nine and it activated something in me that I can't explain it but it was like the uprising was turned on. There was no turning back. And I have, I'm a trans channel and that's like a whole other story to tell, I guess, but I've really not discussed it. I really, I tried to kind of put it out there back in like 2008 and I just, it scared me, you know, it was, it's a lot of information and you don't understand all of it. And I understood it, but at like at a cellular level. And so it's like, I just kind of closed that down. And when I listened to your video, that 1111 Stargate, it was like, you are not shutting this off. There is no way you're turning this off. It is time for you to tell everybody what's going on. And literally right after that, I got out of the tub and I, I channeled my first transmission in probably a decade and pulled in this information and I ended up holding a call with, you know, my client community and said, listen, like we have there, this something big is coming. 2020 is big. And the message I got is that we're genetic transformers. And there's this focus, this laser focus on genetic transformation and, you know, rising above our inherited genetics. And that all came from you. And so this painting um, came from the call. I got this feeling or this this message, like call the indigos. You have to get all the indigos together in your area and, and call them together. And so it just, 
that video is so powerful. Like I hope everyone listening watches it again because I've watched it multiple times because it just turned everything on. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, you've got a real Trinity um, energy, a real Trinity warrior energy because you are a Scorpio. So that has that same powerful energy um, in your sun sign. So you are an indigo individual. And so you've got that as well. And then if you were born on the 21st of November, so that's 11 days in mm -hmm. to November. So it's like 11, 11, and then another 11 and you were born. So you've got this, um, this trinity of sort of uh, magical um, alignment and magical code that you've come in with. And I can see that you're very indigo and I'm, I'm not surprised that you're a, a trans channel and it's very very common um what you're feeling and i went through something very similar and that's pro probably why you resonate with my story because i shut the channeling down as well and then i would open it up again and shut it down again and think it's rubbish and nonsense and i'm going crazy and then i would surrender to it and know how powerful it was and i would go through this journey and so i think there's a, a connection and a similarity there and um, also it's like it is powerful information. And if you don't understand it and you haven't processed it, it's like, why is this information coming through me when I don't even understand it? How can you get information that you don't actually understand? That's a big thing. And it is scary. It can actually send you into a little bit of a panic because you've got all this code and these, these downloads when you don't know what they are. Um, so with me, I had to really find that focus and that steadiness to be able to move into that teacher training student alignment with my guide in those early days um, that moved eventually into the nine so that 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 direct communication would come in and I could be trained as in calm down don't worry this is how it works so yes this is how it works it's because when you are channeling and especially in, in a trance channeling state you are accessing information from multiple futures all at once and you haven't lived that yet. Your body and your entire DNA field isn't residing in that particular environment yet. And yet you're picking up information from that environment. Obviously, that's because you have the signals that are turning on that are in that environment. So, yes, it's, um, it's not an easy journey to be, to be a channel. And it's not an easy journey to be a trance channel. The nine, well, it wasn't the nine. It was white spirit. Um, try to prepare me to do trance channeling to be honest and um i often i tried but then i would reject it because it's it is the um absolute ultimate of channeling and you kind of lose yourself when it happens and when when the nine came forward and told me to go public i thought well i'm not trance channeling i'm not ready and they explained to me that it was my choice. I could trans channel, I could do automatic writing, I could talk to them and allow them to speak through me. It was absolutely my choice how I wanted to do this. So I sat down and thought, how do I want to bring them through? I don't know as I'm ready to be a trans channel and I didn't want my face out there either or my name. So this is why when I first started, you know, I was Magenta Pixie as a username and everything was done through these um, images. I never intended to connect my face with Magenta Pixie ever. That was never my intention. I wanted to remain completely incognito and anonymous, but obviously <laughs> that was not the destined path for me. So yeah, it's, it's not an easy path, but it, I see that energy in you. I see that in you. It's very activated and very there. It's yeah. Yeah, I listened the other day to an interview with you talking about, you know, your connection with white spirit. And I just had such parallels with that, as you're saying, like what you see and feel like, you know, I started channeling Oxen Shaman and I did have him talk through me and it was, it was a lot. I mean, and I look back, I actually pulled those like out of the archives. I was like, where are those transmissions? Because he spoke of the continent splitting. He spoke of the United States splitting. He spoke of all these things that are happening right now. And so now I'm pulling it back out because I'm like, oh, wait, like <laughs> he gave me some good information. Maybe I need to go back and look at that. And since then, and since this 
November activation, I've actually had this collective come forward and they told me who they were just a couple weeks ago. I had this interdimensional experience and they, they told me they were the collective of the golden onk. And so now I'm like in this whole journey and, and that's one of my questions for you. And you know, there's, there's a lot of folks in the Buddhist biohacker community who I think are channels. I think they've had some kind of experience or something. And I think I would love to know from you, like, what do you, what, how did you know what to do with the information or what did you do? Like, what did that research look like? What did that process look like for you as you're downloading like quantum physics and trying to understand what to do with it and what it means? <laughs> wow. That's a great question. So there wasn't really much research. <laughs> yeah. There wasn't really much research to be done because there was no internet back then in 1993 when it first started happening. Uh, other than books. So I had read this book on channeling and, um, you know, I was, I was looking in the esoteric book um, area in, in, in the bookshop, you know, for um, information. So there was research in that sense. Uh, when everything started to come through, I mean, I believe that it was, for me, personal. It was, a, it was just for my own personal life that, that they were coming to me to help me, which obviously they were. But when the information did start going more quantum and they were telling me all this stuff, I do remember thinking, why am I getting such profound information that is so um, cosmic and so relevant to everyone on the planet? <laughs> uh, should I not be doing something with this? Should I not be telling anyone? But the answer was always vague and, um, you know, it, it wasn't a case of not yet. It was just a case of... Um, in the early days, I wasn't really told much. It was later that I was told that I was in training. And, and actually how I found out I was in training was when I started to move into a mediumship type of energy and I would have all these spirit beings wanting to talk to me. And um, this was about training that psychic space. So I would have white spirit as a doorkeeper, as a gatekeeper, allowing, but, but at first he would allow them all to come in. So I would be completely crowded in my psychic space. And at that time, my higher, um, what, I, what I would know as hyperspace, the crystal palace was actually a room. I hadn't come outdoors yet. And that was there since I was about, I don't know, seven, eight, nine. There was always a room in my head. Anyone who's a mm. star seed will know what I'm talking about. But if you're not, if you're <laughs> new to this, you probably think I'm utterly crazy. As my mother did at the time, she wanted to take me to see a psychiatrist when I would talk to her about this room in my head. And the room would be messy and there'd be furniture all over the floor. And I didn't <laughs> know how to tidy it up as a child. But anyway, in 1993, that room was fairly you know, good. I'd got, I got a good space with it. And, um, that's where I did all of the communication, you know, in, in those, in those early days. And I just thought it was personal for me and how I actually found out that, um, I was in training was all these beings would come into the room and I'd feel overwhelmed and totally crowded, didn't know who to speak to. And they'd all be talking to me and they'd all come from different times and all dressed in different costume. And then white spirit would come in and guide them out. And he would say to them, she is in training. Oh, okay. They'd say fair enough. And they'd leave. So this, she is in training was a big thing that all the spirit understood, but I didn't. So that would start off that sort of conversation. Um, so yeah, it was really like a training, like a learning. I didn't know where it was going. I do remember in one session, cause I lived with my brother at the time in a flat and we would have spiritual sessions every day where we would sit opposite each other and go into meditation and do transfiguration. And both of us would talk about what we were picking up and we'd both read similar books. And it was very, very intense, like a mini ascension process really. And um, I do remember them talking to me a lot back then. And um, my brother would ask a question and I would ask them because I didn't have the knowledge about what questions to even ask back then. Uh, but we did go through this process once where we were, well, I was having visionary experiences. And when I say visionary, I've never had anything like it since. It's almost like, you know, that sort of moment when you are 
early in the morning and the pineal gland is activated, you have that hypnagogic uh, imagery that is so very um, visual and bright. I was actually seeing this while I was awake, not asleep. And I lost my ability to see the room and was fully immersed in the vision, kind of like a augmented reality computer game. That's what it was like. It's never happened to me since. This happened in 93. And that's when oh, I wow. saw um, me sat there with headphones on, talking into a microphone, talking to all these people. And that I know that there were sort of thousands of people listening and I, I knew that they were mostly in America, but it was baffling to me when I saw that because I thought, well, I haven't even got headphones. I've got a pair of headphones for my record player. You know, I was really, behind on technology even then and I still am really um so I didn't understand the vision um so I didn't really process that it was for anything I, I kind of had a gut feeling that something was going to happen and that I was obviously being trained for something but even with that vision of me speaking to thousands of people in America I thought perhaps I was just having some ego moment you know I dismissed mm -hmm. it. I never forgot it because it was such a profound, and it was a series of, of, of visions. I mean, past life visions and, a, you know, they, they were going on over days. I mean, huge, huge learning was going on back then. But no, I didn't really know what it was for back then. Now, if you're going through this now, or if this has happened to you in the last few years, then it's obvious what it's for. It's for this time period. It's for 2020 and it's for where we're going. We've got a clear, clear um, knowing of why it's happening. But, but, but back then in 93, no, I didn't really have a clue what it was for. <laughs> wow, there's so much I want to say because that room, you know, my room was also very messy. And one day it suddenly was only had walls on each side and they were hot pink and I was on a beach and I suddenly, and that was where I went when I channeled Oxen back in 2008. I, I sat in that beach while he was communicating and speaking through. And it was really funny. I, I same thing, you know, I, I, I had like an old desktop. I was doing readings like on the phone plugged into the wall kind of thing back then. And, um, I read this book called Opening to Channel and I just really felt like I wanted to read this book and I and I ended up bringing Oxen in after a series of these meditations practicing this and I remember calling my mom <clears throat> and I'm multi-generational you know runs through the women in my family and probably my dad's side too but I called her and I said so this crazy thing is happening and I'm like channeling this being and my mom's like well there's this story I need to tell you. And she told me when I was like four or five years old that my parents went into my room. It was like the middle of the night and I was up in bed. They had heard noises and I was speaking in a man's voice in a different language as this little kid. And they shook me and shook me and tried to wake me up. And I was like, okay, I think maybe I was supposed to do this from a long time ago. And so that room is just amazing and at least we have more information now i mean i think because even in 2008 like i like i said i was getting this information and it's what do you do with it you know and um i noticed that there was a lot of there's a lot of messages from the nine that speak about quantum physics and i've seen that similarity in the information that i channel as well and it's like i did a powerpoint on string theory a few weeks ago because we were talking about the different dimensions and I'm like, I, I don't even know how I'm talking about these different dimensions. You know, it's just so crazy. Um, so I want to ask, I have so, I have like the longest list of questions, but there's so much that's happened. So this indigo activation happened. I started, you know, tuning into your work and I really want to talk about your book, Lessons from a Living Lemuria. It's such an incredible book. It's so beautiful and it's, it's really amazing. Um, you know, I saw the trailer at the end of one of your videos, bought the book and it just, it spoke to me so much. And I had this profound awakening. I mean, this is like the information that's coming through from the nine is just like blowing me open. I'm sure thousands of people are being blown open. Um, but in this book, I read this book and then all of a sudden, I had this experience and I was laying in bed. This is like, right. I read the whole book in a day. I was like, I just soaked it in 
and I was laying in bed and I had this, I left my body and I was in this place with all these purple leaves and these beautiful gold flowers with this like nectar coming out of it. And I could see two different moons and all this energy. And I knew I was in Lemuria and this woman came forward who now is known as Lucinda of Lemuria, but she came forward and she said, I, I'm your mother. She said, I'm your mother and you're from Lemuria. And she said this, you wanted to come here. And she said, I didn't even want you to come here. Like she's telling me it's like this, this energy exchange of, of this woman. She was blue. She was this blue being. And she's like, you can let go of, of everything here. Like you're, you can just do your work now. You can just do your work. You came here to do this. You wanted to help. You wanted to be here at this time. And it was just so profound and so transforming. And she's definitely part of my team now that I'm pulling in. And so I want you to share a little bit about where this book came from and what your thought process is. I know you've spoken many times about the UK being the new Lemuria and, and the, the, the indigos and the crystals and the Lemurians and the Atlanteans. And there's this blend and vortex of energy happening. And I just want to get all your thoughts on all of this and talk about this book too. So wherever you want to go with that. <laughs> okay. Well, I, UK Lemuria, yes, potentially, potentially many parts in Europe as well. Uh, but that's a metaphor for how we are coming up in this new earth. But with the book, I mean, well, it was a bit of a surprise because I don't, I don't think I've sat down and planned any of them. I think maybe the second book I sat down and thought, right, I want to write a, another book. But the others were kind of, um, they happened. So with Lessons from a Living Lemuria, someone asked me on, on social media, is there karma on eating meat? Do I get karma on eating meat? And I thought, oh, that's a good question. So I bought the nine through and, and responded with only just a few lines. And then there were all these comments from people vehemently disagreeing with what the nine had said and others vehemently agreeing. And loads more questions came up, which I tried to answer because I had the nine with me. So uh, that doesn't happen very often. On social media, it's usually me but sometimes the nine come forward because obviously it's a significant um, question that's being asked and it's important for the, the Starseed Collective. But I didn't know this at the time. So I'm answering all these questions and it was getting more and more um, uh, difficult and challenging and, and people were getting very, very triggered. And I remember thinking that food and nutrition seems to be, um, are we, are you, can you still hear me? Can you still hear me okay? Did we cut off there for a minute? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, it like went a little awry. <laughs> yeah. I thought yeah. so because she looked really still and I thought, oh, it's obviously gone. Yeah, so this this conversation became a little bit more um, uh, challenging and people were getting very triggered. And I remember thinking, this has got to be the most controversial topic I've ever talked about. I mean, the, the, the vitriol and the anger was worse than Donald Trump. You know, <laughs> it was just horrendous over meat eating. Um, and I'd had hundreds of questions and I tried to answer them all. So I thought I'll go away and I'll go through all these questions, bring the nine forward because they're clearly wanting to respond to this. And perhaps I can, you know, make a document or, um, or, or, or a video or something with the information. So all the questions were taken from that Facebook chat, uh, that social media chat. And it turned out that, that every question was just opening up more and more and more. And it ended up um, being a much longer document than I thought. I thought, gosh, we're looking at a, a book here. I remember saying to my husband, look, I think this is going to be a book. Oh, it'll only be really small. Um, are you okay to sort of <laughs> edit another book? You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, so, uh, you know, it's just when it, when it comes through, obviously I pass all the, I write so fast because of the channeling and there's a lot of spelling mistakes and, and grammar and, you know, that has to be passed to him to really go through it with a fine tooth comb several times because the channeling comes through faster. As I was saying earlier, it's, it happens quicker than your brain can catch up with it. So this is what was happening. And then they just started talking about Lemuria and this is the first time. I mean, I wouldn't say the first, but the first time they'd gone into um, 
quite a lot of information about Lemuria, more in depth about Lemuria. And it was very much for me, like I knew this information and I was relearning it, but it was the first time um, the nine had spoken to me about it. And then I realized how the information led on to this because it wasn't really about nutritional food per se. The question was, is there karma in eating meat? So the nine were going into karma itself. What is karma? You know, what, what is it? Is it a case of if you do something, you, you then get a matching um, action occur to you? Is it kind of like a punishment based system? Well, no, it's so much deeper. And so this karma, uh, which is, a, you know, a balancing act really that you become responsible for. And this was specific to eating meat, eating animals. And there was, that was so complex and there was so many different um, uh, experiences and it all is so individual and depending on the person and their intention and where they acquire the, 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 the animal product from and what their goal is in life. You know, are they wanting to go through an ascension process? Do they have health issues? Um, are they working through shadow issues? There's so many different, um, uh, different permeations of, of that question, that one question. I can't remember who asked it, but I'm so grateful for, to that one person for asking that one question, which was, the thing is when someone asks a question, if they ask a question because, well, they think they might want to know the answer or they've researched it and they want to know what the nine say, or if they ask a question as a challenge, None of that really brings the nine in. And you'll know this as, as, as a channel. When someone asks a question with a wide open heart in absolute humility and service, because they, it means so much to them to know the answer, that brings in the guidance system when you're a channel. Mm -hmm. That's like opening the door. So that turned into the book. That one question on social media turned into that book. Hmm. Well, it's really amazing and it's perfect timing because I think so many of us are asking that exact question, meat or no meat, you know, with my, my health issues of the past, you know, I was keto for a really long time. And ever since Lucinda came through, it's like, I cannot stomach meat. And suddenly I'm like, well, how am I going to take care of my body? And so it's just so synchronistic, the book. And I highly recommend it to everyone because it's, it is so clear. And I love how clear they are in that book about being in alignment with what you feel versus it just being it's one way or another way. It's really like the way is based on what you feel and the energy and the, you know, the ascension process and even detailing how to make those changes. I'm actually following their instructions right now. I'm looking at superfoods and seaweed and, you know, I practice Ayurveda. And so I, I have a lot of tools and resources for those things, but hadn't really thought of it in that way until the nine presented it as that process. And so just really, really incredible and answers that question because a lot of us have had that question. I've had so many people ask that question to me. And so um, now I send them to your book because it's so good. Um, so yeah, so I wanna dig into this time that we're in um, because it's so amazing. I keep telling everybody, this is like your wedding day. Like I knew it was gonna come, you know, and you think about it your whole life. And then when it's finally there, you're like looking around going, is this, is this really happening, you know? And yes. I remember, I, so I watched your video and there were, you know, many synchronistic things that happened in November and January came and I felt like I was twiddling my thumbs. I'm like, what, what, is, what am I supposed to do now? Like, no one cares what I have to say, like what's happening? And then it was like, boom. And I don't think I've slept since. It's been like nonstop work, day and night. I'm so clear and I, I know you're that way. I know so many out there that way where it's like, I will work every day for the next 10 years, every day, every night, like this is the time, like we can't stop. And I know my husband's like, what is going on? Because there's nights I haven't slept. I mean, I'm just working, writing, podcasts. We've, we've done three global healing summits. I mean, I, I can't even believe the amount of content that's just, I created a documentary in the middle of all, I mean, in 10 weeks, so much has happened. And so I want you to just share, I mean, 
there you have a whole channel about this so i hope everybody tunes into that i'm sure they will and most that are listening probably are already but i just want you to share kind of what's your now that we're a few months into this this ascension process like what are what are your thoughts when you look back at the last couple months well same as you i mean it's been absolutely crazy um and i never really uh, intend to work every single day. I have to pace myself. I have to pace my energy because of health issues I've had for a long time that I would also call past health issues. But if I don't pace myself, I mean, if I was to stay up all night and miss sleep more than about three nights, I would be calling, asking for trouble with my, with my energy. I have to be very careful. Uh, but at the same time, when the um, situation occurred back in uh, sort of middle March, when we realized this was the situation, um, I did wonder how I would cope with the amount of work that I needed to do and the amount of information that was coming through without burning myself out. Um, and I'm very glad for all of the nine's teachings because over the last sort of, uh, well, ever since I got online, really, I've had to pace myself and I have been moving between high energy, good health, good focus, and then times of lower energy, health not being great, having to miss work that I could have done and staying home loads and getting frustrated with that and asking the nine, why, why is this happening to me when I could be working? And I now I'm very grateful because it has taught me to be at home and love being at home. It's taught me to pace myself, which we need because if yeah. you pace yourself within that rhythm, then you build what the nine call blue star fire, which is also known as like chi or, or mana. And this gives you a sort of a steady stamina emotionally and mentally and spiritually and somewhat physically with most people. Um, I, I, I've not quite got there physically yet in the way I would like to. However, that gives you the stamina that you need to see a situation through long term. And that's what this is, is. I mean, as soon as this occurred back in March, I didn't think for one minute, oh, this is just a blip and it'll be over by end of April. I knew this was the whole of 2020 with uh, repercussions occurring later, but certainly 2020. And I think every single person, psychic, medium, channel, truther, anyone who's been in this awareness knew they knew straight away it was like, um, it was a call and it was a code within us. It's a knowing because we were prepared for this before we incarnated. We were prepared to have the triggers and the codes so that we would be aware of when the time was. And we may not have known exactly how it would occur. I didn't know how it would occur exactly, but we knew we would know it when it was there. And that same feeling of knowing something when it's there is what we're in now it's like we're not necessarily getting things ahead of time yes we are we're having some information some clues but it's when things happen if we're in alignment we know what to do we know what to do and, and we'll be taught this within meditation within dream time many star seeds including myself are having dreams where it's like a training ground for the rest of this year and what's coming the images and the the characters we meet in the dream time is like a training for us so this is happening on a multi-level we've got the, the third dimension and what's happening in the third dimension and the physical realm which is as anyone in this awareness will know is not fully third dimensional anymore we are moving into a, a lower fourth in 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 many places a mid and a middle fourth dimensional using the nines model uh, structure on this planet right now and that is sent set to roll into the higher fourth dimensional construct and into obviously a fifth dimensional reality that's where we're going so um the last few months i would agree with you it's it's been it's been crazy it's been um sustained um 
work for me it's like writing the books when i write the books i know that i'm going into a zone where every single day i'm working every day every night there'll be insights when i'm dreaming i wake up and then i uh, integrate uh, those insights work out what they mean get in front of my computer or with my pen and paper and bring the nine forward and it's intense and when i finished i then take some time to um you know re relax a little bit and and, and um, not be so intense but it's like each book is a training for that intensity because that intensity isn't going to stop for the channels, for the way showers, for the star seeds in that frequency, the ones holding the indigo energy. Crystal star seeds won't be in such an intensity. So when we talk about this, they're going to be thinking, well, what's this intensity? This is a, this is a beingness. This is a, this is an energy that is, is flowing and, um, it's, it's, it is sustainable. It isn't necessarily intense. And some of the crystals will be in fear and worrying about how they can sustain this because crystals are incredibly sensitive. The in um, are in that intensity the whole of this year. So if you do have a high energy level, if you've got a good energy level, then it's, it's, um, it's good to sustain that and continue with it because you're, you're, you're living your mission, you're doing your job. If you do feel that you get burnout and you do have an energy issue physically or mentally or whatever, then learn to pace yourself and learn when to step back. It, it really though, you're not really not working when you're not working. You're still working, but in a different way. I mean, I decided to take a full day off the other, the other week and go and see some of my, what I would call 3D friends, although none of them are really 3D anymore. <laughs> They're all sort of <laughs> three and 4D friends, you know, in alignment with this, the, the planetary system and the consciousness. And just as I was walking out the door, I thought it's really nice to just have a day off and talk about well, you know, everyday things and normal things. Um, and the nine clearly said to me, well, yes, but you will be working today. And <laughs> so I, I knew that I was not going to be in an intense situation, like the constant downloads and monads and information, but I knew that I would be working as such. And I wasn't sure, I have three friends that I've been seeing for sort of 20, 30, I can't even remember how many years. We've known each other since we were in our 20s. We all were pregnant together and had our babies together. So stayed friends with these three, these three ladies. And I was wondering which one it was. Well, turned out it was all three in different ways that I was assisting. But it's difficult because I don't want to be with my friends. And suddenly they've known me for 30 odd years, grown up with me, seen me uh, in all my different emotional states as I'm growing up before I was channeling and all of a sudden I'm this guru I don't want to be like that with them because they remember me you know getting drunk and falling out of a nightclub you know they're, they're not going to look at me as a as a guru who <laughs> doesn't drink alcohol and doesn't eat meat and and goes on YouTube and talks about all this stuff it's it's just complete cognitive dissonance for them because they know me how I used to be um so they've been there with that journey but I think that they are starting to realize that something profound did happen to me and that I'm actually not the same person that I was. And I guess really that's good because it's an example for them to see that that can actually happen. So yes, it's, it's like everything is work. You think you're having a day off and just chilling in the sun, but it's work because the energy, if you want to call it work, it's, it's not really work. It's that frequency. You can't remove yourself from it. If there's a download, if there's high energy and it's intense and you're in that frequency, it is there all the time, which is why the nine talk about this um, blue star fire moving in this sustainable um, stamina way. It's stargate ascension. So there are two types of ascension. There's ascension, which is the raising of the frequency, moving through these dimensional states, which is what the planet is doing. Stargate ascension is the preservation of the energy field because you are leading that movement and there will be others that follow through the tail of your of your leadership if you will as if you're the head of a comet and they move through the tail of a comet actually the nine use a dragon as um a metaphor for that so you are a dragon rider and many will sit on the back of the dragon that you will ride, you will steer, but you need stamina to be a dragon rider. You can't burn out, you'll fall off the dragon and so will everyone else because the dragon rider needs to, 
has more responsibility in Stargate Ascension because the dragon rider is, is holding the dragon and holding the reins and steering the dragon through that Stargate. That's the metaphor they use. So this is very much what is happening right now. There are huge, huge amounts of people that are going crazy, that are going through this um, up and down swing of emotion on a high one minute and so relieved, like, yes, the pubs are opening, you know, the bars, you say in America, you know, I can go out for a meal, yay. And then, oh my goodness me, another part, like Leicester here in the UK has just gone on lockdown and everyone is freaking out because it could be them crash down again all of that high energy is then is then dashed so that is not going to give you the stamina you need to go through stargate ascension if you're up and down with these emotions because you're keying into the false narrative you're keying into the attempted planetary takeover and the dark matrix codes that they are giving you we have to find a way to remove ourselves from that, even though we still see it and we still feel it. And it, I'm, I'm so proud of one of my 3D friends. Actually, I've got three friends and I, if I had to say which one is the least likely to go through Ascension, it would be this one because she's, you know, out at the clubs, she's drinking, you know, she's never really sort of come to um, any kind of in fact she thinks spiritual awareness and psychic stuff is absolutely nonsense and when I talk about it she just bursts out laughing and yet of my three friends she is the one who is not moving with this this uh, uh, mm. raise one minute and having her hopes dashed the next and that's simply because her son who's in his mid 20s uh, late 20s has become a truther and woken mm. up and started, you know, following David Icke and discovering all this stuff and is teaching her. Now, she wouldn't normally have listened to him. She would have thought he was crazy. But she already knew this stuff from me. Now, she thought I was crazy, so it was dismissed. But now it's coming from her son. It's like, hang on a minute. This is one of my best friends and my son. And it's woken her up. And I'm saying this not to talk about someone that no one knows, but because this is will be happening to you this will be happening to the star seeds you are going to see people that you never thought would ever awaken but these synchronicities are occurring for them and they are connecting the dots in their way and the great awakening is i guess this this unexpected and when i say unexpected i speak from the service to self uh, perspective because we mm -hmm. it's not unexpected to us but from the service of self perspective they're trying to prevent the great awakening because the great awakening t moves away from the new world order timeline so it's the last thing they want they're trying to prevent it so the unexpected byproduct of the attempted planetary takeover is the great awakening but many of the service to self individuals are not acknowledging it they won't see it for what it is. They see it as still something that they can control. They, they don't, many of them don't have the faith or the belief in the people to be able to go through a great awakening. But then there are tiers and layers in that service to self structure and those in the higher echelons there are fully aware of the great awakening and they knew about it. And they, for some reason that I have yet to fathom, are pleased or, or the emotion wouldn't be pleased but they are um they're okay with it because they want to see the awakening occur because it means that they have acted as a catalyst in in their own destiny their destiny is to be a catalyst for the awakening of the planet which goes back thousands and thousands and thousands of years uh, before atlantis it goes right back to lemuria um, that's where that comes from. So you've got this tier of service to self structure that all have different um, different karmic paths and different ways of expressing a service to self polarization. It's so, so complex. I've probably I don't know if I lost you or am I seeing? No, I'm, I am right there with you on so many things. I made some notes because I was like, you're oh. sparking stuff, you know, like. I thought you off. were with me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm right there with you. And, and <laughs> you know, we said this, I think, before I started recording, but, you know, I didn't want to see all this. I've really lived outside of the system. I left the medical matrix 
you know, in 2011. And one of the things I, you know, that you sparked in me with our health issues, which I'm going to guess are probably similar if we were to go into that. Um, but I think it was part of the training. Like I learned how to purify my body. I was removed from processed foods and the medical system. And I don't, I, I don't, you know, participate in any of that which we won't use their words on here, but I don't, I don't participate and um, have just really been clear of that and didn't have a television, any of that. So I was very removed. And so part of my journey and, and I've seen it with my husband, you talk about people waking up. My husband's really incredible. So, and he's an aer he's in aerospace and um, you know, was part of the Orion program to go to Mars and, and all of these things. So he, but he's also a drummer and this very shamanic energy. And so, you know, we went on this journey together of like, we have to go look at all this information. And luckily for me, he is a very logical Aries engineer man. And he has dug and dug and dug. And the more he's dug, not only the more has he awakened, but it's helped our lifestyle because he's been so supportive of me and yet I don't think he understood. And now he's like, oh, I see why we need to unplug the Wi-Fi. You know, I see why we need to do these things where before maybe he didn't. And, and I'm seeing my parents, my dad, completely changing his energy field. And it's like, whoa, like folks are coming to the party. I haven't seen at the party, you know? And and so, yeah, I, you know, that, that's a huge thing, being able to take care of yourself and understanding that it, it's, it's removing yourself from all of the, the systems and the programs and all of those things. And with the working piece, I mean, nature is my go-to, you know, I want to go. And yesterday I took the whole day off electronics. We just finished this huge global healing summit. I was like, I need a couple days off. And of course, as soon as I go sit on this rock, it's like, here's a massive download about everything that's coming up this next month. And it was, you know, beautiful information, but it's also like, oh my gosh, you guys, like every time, every time I take a break, I get a huge to-do list, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, here's all this other stuff you need to go do. <laughs> Yeah. So it's pretty funny. Um, there is so much you just said right now. So I'm like, where am I? Um, I want to talk about, I want to talk about Trump, but I also want to talk about the founding fathers because this is like something I want to talk about, you know, the, the taking back of our symbolism. And I, I really want to get your viewpoint on the mace, the Freemasons and sort of this energy because it's presented to me. And so I had this experience. I was in the middle of a little, you know, virtual gathering and Thomas Jefferson showed up and this was a couple, you know, right, probably two weeks before all of the racial issues started blowing up here in the United States. And so he showed up and I thought, well, this is really weird. Like, I don't really have a connection to him or to this energy. I don't really understand. And I found a quote from him in which Thomas Jefferson said that Amer Americans can never expect to know the truth. And I wish I had it in front of me because I quoted exactly, but he said, Americans cannot expect to know the truth unless they have a rebellion. And he said, and there should be a rebellion like every um, century and a half. And literally that's now a century and a half from when he said that quote. And so that came through. And then of course, you know, these racial issues broke out and I did some research on Thomas Jefferson and saw he has a lot of controversy around him with all of that. Well, then I had this dream and it was one of those lucid dreams. You know, I'm a lucid dreamer. So it's like most of my nights lucid, but you know, there's those particular dreams that are just so profound that you just are shaken by it. And George Washington came to me in a dream. And behind him were all these cloaked men that I just knew in the dream they were Masons. I just knew they were Masons and they were all cloaked. And he held up the quarter, the American quarter. And he said, we put our symbols here. And he said, we put our symbols everywhere so that you wouldn't forget. And he said, don't forget. And suddenly I was whisked away to all of these places, Mount Rushmore, the Liberty Bell, you know, the, seeing the Declaration of Independence, all these things. And so I've really not been able to decipher this because I feel controversial energy with it. Like, I feel like there's, there's 
there's light energy and dark energy. And I just wanted to talk to you about this because in, in I think it's really the last video from uh, of channeled information from the nine that's posted right now, talks about this clue of the blue lodge. And my husband, of course, Googled it. And right away, it's like Freemasons. And I'm like, whoa, like there's, for some reason, these founding fathers are showing up. I really don't have a connection with them, but they're coming to me. And there's all this information and I've tried to dig into it and you know how that goes. I mean, there's so, it's like a rabbit hole of information and it's good and it's bad. And so anyway, I, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. So you've explained really well what's happening to the star seeds at the moment. You're getting this multi-leveled uh, codes coming in with all different energies and frequencies. About the symbolism, we are reclaiming symbols that have been taken from us by these service to self groups you know thousands and thousands of years ago they've taken these symbols and put energy into those symbols in order to control us and these symbols are uh, they've been uh, preserved they've been sort of in in these mystery schools all the magic within them has been kept from the people and sort of since 2012 and somewhat before that we have been waking up to the symbolism that's everywhere and we're reclaiming that symbolism so your dream is incredibly multifaceted with multiple codes there will be personal things in there just for you but also information that is global and that's what's happening you're getting personal information for yourself and your own path and global information coming through at the same time and you're going to be going through a journey simultaneous to the other star seeds so you and i let's say two star seeds we're going through a journey that is almost identical yet it will be unique mine will be unique to me yours will be unique to you and the symbolism and the way that we use that symbolism it's the same symbolism they're flame letters it's it's a language it's an alphabet um, or, or a series of numbers but the way that we perceive them will always be slightly unique so looking at your dream um, i'm not familiar with the people the names of the people you mentioned like george washington and the and the other guy i don't, I don't really know much about them at all or thomas jefferson i'm um, an american and i don't know <laughs> I, don't really, I mean i've heard of them obviously but it's not because i'm not american i mean i i didn't know anything about um uh, Winston Churchill either knew nothing about him other than he was a prime minister back when my granddad was a, was a you know a young man um, and when they put wanted to pull his statue down um, I, all I didn't want to go googling him I just wanted to look at his photograph and see his energy and I did and I thought oh right <laughs> I could see I could see um, it was just because I'd never really been interested in looking so I, I'm not familiar with those people so the founding fathers, this is a whole multi-leveled situation. And I think what's happening with you is similar to what I was saying about the service to self structure. You have these tiers, you have these echelons of on a need to know basis, if you, if you will. So you've got these third dimensional service to self individuals that are holding up the structure and then you've got the middle tier uh, and then you've got the top tier, which are spiritually aware individuals who work with divinity but it's on the opposite um polarity to us mm -hmm. um so that's what you're seeing when you've got these these beings talking to you showing you oh we we, we this is our symbol don't forget the symbol you are having that higher echelon that that um higher tier of the service to self structure coming to you which is incredibly rare um it happens to me as well but there aren't many people who actually communicate with service to self individuals full on but it is done very much with indigo individuals it is much of part of their path because they're looking at the darkness it is done within a training ground zone so you'll have light there too there's protection there for you that's why you're sensing that so in that structure that's coming in and saying don't forget these symbols you've got a higher echelon service to self teacher along with a service to others polarized individual because in the heart the highest realities be fifth dimension and beyond 
there's no polarity there. So when you're dreaming and you're an awake and aware starseed, you're in a fifth dimensional polarity for some of the dreams and for many of the dreams, but not all of them. So you're looking at a unity uh, spectrum anyway. There is no service to self and service to others. There is, but it's not it's not so um, obvious to us. And when, when we dream, we move beyond the fifth dimension anyway. So once you get to the seventh dimension, there is no polarity. That's a unity structure from the seventh dimension onwards. So that's why you're sensing dark and light. It's so similar to me. My dreams are the same. You know, there's darkness and I'm running from something and it, there, there's the, 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 um, the Illuminati cabal takeover and it's right in my face and I can feel their energy. And then we've got the light there and we've got the guidance. That's what's happening to us all. This mm -hmm. is because we are in this third stroke, fourth dimensional physical reality in the middle of a polarity war, a war on consciousness, an information war. The internet is the battleground. So your dream is presenting all of those different frequencies to you. Now, regarding the Freemasons, it's the same sort of thing. You have a tier and you have a structure. And again, I haven't studied the Freemasons. I haven't researched them. I only know what I'm shown from the nine. And what I'm so from the nine, I'm shown media mystic channeled information from that higher perspective and psychic awareness from my own perspective at the same time. So you work in these horizontal and vertical ways. So vertical being the channeling, horizontal being the, the psychic. So looking at the Freemason structure, you actually have individuals within that structure now in, in, in our current uh, time that are utterly benevolent people and are not even aware of the service to self structure. They know nothing about it. They think that this is just, um, you know, a, a meeting of, of, of men and, and sort of coming together and sharing one's religion and, there is no um that there's nothing sinister in those lower levels it's mm -hmm. when you get to the higher levels and even then some of those individuals branch off into um they never find out about the service to self tier they stay within a freemasonry structure in this benevolent sort of place and others are automatically taken um, because of the frequency they hold and their, their beliefs and their philosophies and how they've grown through this. They're, t they're taken into um, a, a more of a cabal Illuminati network. So I think it's the 33rd degree is supposed to be the highest tier and you can't go beyond that. And that's where many of them will stay, but then yeah. others do go beyond that. So that's like now, and that's only a very basic presentation of that structure. Yeah. And the Freemasons, it's only one structure that mirrors a service to self hierarchical structure. There are multiple of them. The Freemasons is just one little branch of that overall core structure. Um, but the founding fathers, going back to the founding fathers again, I don't know anything about them really, uh, other than, again, you would have had very benevolent, innocent uh, people who are, are um, wanting the best for humanity and wanting to create this new society and this new civilization and working really hard and very intelligent. And then there was the infiltration of this service to self structure as well because that's been there as well it, it's hijacking every single structure when um you speak of the founding fathers the nine draw me and they spoke about this i think in that channeling you referenced to who we are and we are the founding fathers we are the founding fathers and mothers of the new earth that's that's the word they actually used you are the founding fathers you are the founding fathers and mothers you are the founding humans you know that's who but this time we are founding everything, this new earth structure on total benevolence, total light, love, compassion, because what we are doing is creating a structure that's not hijacked. We've moved above the place where the hijacking goes to, and we are now presenting a structure that can't be hijacked. And I know that's very difficult for people to see that because when you actually look around you in our environment, there's a heck of a lot of hijacking going on oh, and yeah. it, it actually looks as though we are done for. It really does look like there's no way out. It does look like that from that third dimensional and lower fourth dimensional viewpoint. But when you look within this higher tier dimensional system, which is what we're moving into and what we're creating, then you can see 
that we are creating a structure that hijacking cannot possibly occur. And the star seeds are holding the energies of all of this. That's why you have to look at the darkness, but you also need to hold the pure light and the love. And it's, it's not easy because the darkness pulls your emotions down, can make you feel devastated, horrified, very angry. And basically it makes you feel that you can't go on. You lose, you lose hope. You, you, you cannot continue because this machine that you are fighting is simply too powerful and too big. So you move into that place of utter hopelessness and despair. So that's why it's very difficult for people who haven't integrated that shadow aspect to be able to hold the higher frequency, which is joy, bliss, powerful fire, moving through that power. It isn't an easy thing to hold the whole structure, which is why you've got some people lost in the despair who are awake and aware. Mm. And you've got some people who are not going to look at the darkness because if they do, it's going to pull them down and they're up there holding the light, but then that's not integrated either. What we must do as way showers, and there's a difference between a star seed and a light worker and a way shower. The way shower is the dragon rider. They're the ones sitting on the dragon holding the reins. They are the ones that are leading others through stargate ascension, which is not the same as ascension. It's, it's, it's a different thing. And there's no prize for that. There's no big badge or medal. You're not better than the others. Like, ah, I'm on Stargate Ascension and you're not. It's not like that at all. There's no ego. It's very difficult to be a Dragon Rider way shower. It isn't really a job any one of us would really want to do because it is not easy. But for those people, and there are many, many, many of them, there are, I don't know how many, but there are thousands of dragons waiting for their dragon riders and thousands that are dragon riders and way showers for those people it's absolutely crucial that they balance that spectrum within them so they are able to look at the darkness and it's not about looking at this negative stuff and feeling nothing and thinking yeah it's okay i feel nothing of course you feel the same emotions that everyone else does but you integrate them almost instantly or at least there is a, a short delay so that you can get back to that higher place so you may need to take a day or even a week to to um process what you've just learned and um and, uh, and allow the grief and the horror to be felt and process it through and the reason why you're processing it through is not because you're heartless and you don't want to feel those emotions it's because you're a dragon rider and you're a way shower and you are needed you have to process those emotions you have to get back up because yes there's horror yes there's terror yes it's going to give us awful grief when we realize what it is but that's not the only vibration there is also love and power and compassion and Stargate Ascension and fire and empowerment and unity. And that is just as real. And we must feel them all when we are going to stand as a way shower because you can't lead the way without having that. And I, I know that there are people that are trying to and there are people out there that are speaking and they, they haven't integrated that and it isn't working. They are not able to um, hold that energy. It's burning out quickly. You need to go back and go back to integration, back to processing. It's not an easy journey at all. It really isn't. Um, but it gives us the tools we need to ride through 2020. So anyone who's riding through 2020 with that stamina and isn't falling for that dark trap, isn't having their hopes raised one minute and dashed the next, Yes, I can go to a cafe. Oh no, I've got to wear a mask. Oh dear, I'm going to be sprayed on my feet with disinfectant as I walk through the door. You know, we need to actually be on a level. And that, that um, means listening to that intuition and that guidance. It's like that cafe isn't the right cafe to go to. Neither is that one. Neither is that one. Hold on a minute. This one is. Why? Because the people running it are actually awake themselves. So there's a little bit of um, hand sanitizer on the side and there's a bit of a queue, but there's, it's not going to, they're going to do enough that they can to get past the government requirements mm -hmm. 
or council requirements or wherever you are in the world, but they're not going to be throwing this, um, you know, situation and this 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 uh, sanitization against um, pathogens in your face, uh, yeah. literally. <laughs> so yeah. we as star seeds, as as light workers, as way showers, we need to work with that guidance to find out where we can go and where we can sort of um, flow with this next year, with 2020. And I say 2020 because 2020 is about 2020 vision. It's about seeing everything clearly. And it's not just about reading it or seeing it on a video or hearing someone speak it. It's about experiencing it yourself. And that's what the people are going through. And it's awful to watch. I mean, I had a friend say to me, oh gosh, it's so lovely. At last we're free. Mm. And I felt so sorry for her because I thought, well, we're not. Not We are on a higher level, but you know, let's be realistic on the third stroke, yeah. lower fourth. There's not work to do. <laughs> and I, but I can't tell her that because she wouldn't understand. And But those people have to go through this, this relief of being free. And then, oh my goodness me, I'm trapped again. How awful. Why? Why is this happening? Why doesn't someone do anything? I feel like I'm in a prison. I can't stand it anymore. I can't take it anymore. I want to give up. It's it's yeah. terrible. And we as the Starseeds are watching this happen everywhere we go with the people we love. But this is what's waking them up because telling them hasn't worked over all these years. Yeah. And never, never would. You can, you know, lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. That is the, the crux of it. So true. Well, and, you know, as you were talking about the founding fathers, I'm totally getting information. So thank you for that. You know, I just, and so I'll try to articulate it the best I can, but I really got this energy of these symbols that I keep being shown that are connected to that dream that I had, you know, the, the serious star with the eye, with the triangle and some of these things that this is about us understanding what the truth of those symbols really are with a capital T and how we leverage those as we go forward. So I'm getting this information download of like, this is part of my work is to go learn and understand what these are about because they are just like being presented to me in many ways. And we're coming up on the 4th of July and there's an astrological reason that the 4th of July means what it means. And it's connected to that star. And so I'm just getting this information as you're talking about that. And integration is like, man, my collective is pounding that integrate, integrate, integrate. And actually most, we've done so many uh, episodes here on this channel about shadow work because you have to see it. And being a Scorpio woman, Kali and, and Durga and Pele and Hakate, I mean, they're my, they're my team, man. So I'm not afraid of that, you know, but it's so hard to really look at the ugly stuff. And you do have those moments. Like I, I, you know, what you're talking about those moments of like, Oh my God, like, how are we even going to get out of this? You know? And then it kind of, you process it and you go to the, it's like, we just have to do it. Like, I just keep getting like, roll up your sleeves and get to work. Like this is our mission. We are building the rainbow bridge to that other side. And I've seen, you know, with the timelines and I want to get into Trump and, and that in a minute too, but, you know, doing, I'm still doing readings and in doing those individual readings, suddenly there were no timelines. Like I couldn't see anything anymore. It was like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, you know, welcome to 2020 psychic readings. There are none. And so it's yeah. been a lot more just supporting through this journey. But I noticed last week a significant shift in my readings in which I'm seeing timelines. I'm seeing things farther out. And I really feel like there's been so much work that's done. And part of the download I got yesterday that was really beautiful is that the first wave happened and the, the second wave they said is going to start on 7-7, the second wave of ascension. And, and what the collective said yesterday was the second wave would be to the hundredth denominator of the first wave. And that we aren't even going to believe the numbers that are going to find our light communities. And what they showed me that I want to tell you because it was so beautiful. And I knew part of it was because we were talking, but that, that all of us, you know, that are, are leading this charge, 
we had to establish our space. You know, we, ha we had to have that body of work. I think they even referenced that in the transmission I got, which is, you know, look at the teachers and look at the body of work and look at what's happening. Now that that's established in the second wave, what they showed me is that while the second wave of folks are waking up, we yeah. are building rainbow bridges to each other. And it's yeah. about our light communities connecting. And I felt so strongly that I wanted to tell, I mean, this is our channel. This isn't just about me. This is about all of us as light workers. And this is about you too, you know, and that you're welcome to be here anytime because we have to build those, those light bridges to each other. Like this is our mission because we're going to build, I, I see this vision of like real physical light communities that we build where we are visiting each other and connecting with each other and having our temple spaces together. And I'm like, it's real. And the collective said to me, you couldn't access it if it wasn't there. That's what they keep telling me. It's there. Every time I get in despair, every time I get worried or I'm like, oh my God, there's so much work to do. How are we going to do all this? I don't even know. And, you know, then I, I, I keep being told like it's there or you couldn't access this information. It exists. It's already happening simultaneously. I mean, there's no time, no, you know, it's all there for us. And so just everything you're saying, it's like, you know, it is a lot of work and it is hard and it is, you know, can create that stress. But I also think that integration is so potent, so, so potent. And I had this dream and I don't want to get into all my dreams, but there's so, you know, you know how this is, you know, but I, I was standing at the base of the tower, the big white tower, and I saw this, the cosmos and it split in two and there was darkness and there was bright, bright light. And in the middle were these twinkling stars. And they said, these are the folks who've integrated. And they said, it's not enough. It has to be everything and everyone integrated together. And it, it all came together. And it was just this beautiful message of how important it is that we love the light. And, you know, I, I've talked about integration. And the other thing that goes along with that is forgiveness, forgiving the negative agenda, forgiving it because it's still part of us. It's still yeah. who we are. Like that is still part of these structures and these matrices that we have chosen to exist in. Yeah, that's a really tough one for a lot of people. And I, I did get a download about that sort of step one, step two and step three. And it's very difficult to just jump to step three, which is the forgiveness and the love for them as well, which is where the higher echelons, individual service to self, that's where they are. It's not love because they don't have an open heart like we do, but there is a respect from that place um, because they still understand unity and d divinity, even though it's from an opposite polarity. But I'd just like to say something about the downloads. And this is very important because this is how it's working. You're talking about this, this, this unity with all of us. And that's, the, that's what the nine call alchemical unification. This is what we're undergoing right now. We, we have to. And that, that metaphor of the uh, cosmos splitting and you know, those in the middle in the stars that have integrated, they are the founding fathers and mothers and everybody eventually joins them, however long that may take in our future trajectory. But this um, download situation, we are triggered by many things as in when i say triggered i'm talking about a key um something that is um a acting as a um a, a fast rapid moving catalyst and that can be crystals that can be nature that can be anything but we trigger each other and what's happening to the aware and awake star seeds who are fifth dimensionally uh, experiencing and above they're triggering one another rapidly into continuous monadic downloads. So when, say you and I were talking and we're talking about more down to earth things uh, or, or, or even negative things, we'll still be able to have a really good conversation, but we're not going to trigger one another into downloads necessarily because our conversation is in a lower vibrational state the minute and it's always mixed with a star seed you don't stay on the negative it's always mixed the minute you start speaking about higher dimensional um concepts the new earth the dreams that you've had um all of those things your vibration 
changes, your DNA is activated. The quantum DNA starts to rapidly um, exude energy and radiate energy and frequency. And an individual who is empathic, psychic, aware, clairvoyant, and all of those things feels it, even if they're not processing it. They might not be saying to themselves, oh, Magenta Pixie's just activated my quantum DNA. They're just thinking, I've had a download. So that's what's happening. Conversation is creating the reality that you're talking about by people. And this happened, I did a round table recently, um, which we called the Magdalene Flame. There were six of us and we were triggering one another nonstop you and I are doing that now, but it isn't just about communication and talking. It's listening as well. So anyone who listens to a conversation between two people who are communicating fifth dimensionally, it's triggering them to have these downloads. And we're all getting similar downloads with slightly different metaphors, but we're all coming up with the same sort of uh, conclusions. And uh, there was something else you said that I wanted to comment on, and I can't even remember what it was now. Um, yeah, there was something else you said that was quite profound. I haven't got pen and paper here. I should have written it down. What was the other thing that you said after you spoke about the um, the little stars in the middle of the polarity cosmic split? Let's see. We were talking about the, let's see, I was talking about the dream and then I was talking about us building bridges to each other and the waves of people coming over. And That's it. The wave. Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen it necessarily as a second wave um, in those terms what i'm just seeing is this sort of um, ever increasing awakening and yes you're right it's going to start occurring kind of now and the other thing was the early days of july and you mentioned independence day which is something we don't celebrate in the uk or in europe the nine said to me this independent day independence day on july 4th which we don't really we know it's something americans do and it's nice but it's not really in the forefront of our minds but the nine said the Independence Day on July the 4th is not limited this year. This is the first year. It is not limited to a United States of America Independence Day. Mm -hmm. It is a world Independence Day. This is a world Independence Day because this is one of the gateways into the new earth. So we started with the solstice that we've just had on the 20th. And yeah. then the next day we had the eclipse. And, you know, day one of the new reality was back with the spring equinox. But day one of the seeds planted for new earth was the solstice. July the 4th is another gateway, but this is specifically for worldwide independence. This is a Gaia energetic. These are when the Liberty templates start to come down. And what the service to self individuals are doing is taking Liberty away. Now, when you restrict something and you try to um, resist it, so they collectively, regardless of how much magic and power and technology they have, they're in resistance to the Great Awakening. So their collective law of magnetic attraction manifestation within their consciousness is creating the Great Awakening because they're massively in resistance to it. Yep. I get goosebumps everywhere. Like that, I, I, I don't feel, you know, I, I've looked at, cause 4th of July is so huge. Like the energy is so huge. And I, I at first thought maybe there's another event or something that's going to happen. And then I it's think exactly, so. I, I think there will be, and we have an eclipse as well the next day. Yes, we do. And, and I read something very interesting. I'll have to email it to you. Um, one of my colleagues sent me information about the astrology for the original Independence Day and what that, that eye with the triangle and the star of Sirius even is about and the star beings that it's about. And there is so much potency and there's a lot lined up astrologically on the 4th of July that's similar to the original, the very first one. So there's this whole, it, it's big energy. And in fact, I was going to have a a global meditation that day. And they told me, no, do it on seven, seven, like just hold space over that weekend. And so I moved it because it's like, and then they said like this massive, I just got yesterday. There's this massive opening that's happening. Another, another, you know, tsunami of awakening on starting on seven, seven. So yeah, we're coming up <clears throat> and it's no, <clears throat> excuse me. It's no surprise that we're talking today. I felt like it was important for us 
to talk on this date for some reason, because we're going into some kind of energy that's going to continue yeah. to, to yes, propel. That's true. And I, I mean, I hadn't necessarily picked up anything specific today other than we are in a wave of, of gateways. We're in a wave of, this is multiple Stargate systems now that we're going through. It's not like we wait several months for a Stargate. We're going through multiple Stargates. And this first period of July, but it was the same at the beginning of June. It was the same at the beginning of May. The early parts of the month are really kicking in this, this, this frequency. And July is really, really sort of ramping up. And then in August, we've got the Lion's Gate which is incredibly powerful. I agree with you about the 7-7, which is my son's birthday, and he's always been spiritually aware since the day he was born. And I got visions of his um, past life experiences when I was pregnant with him, and that was very um, Lemurian and Atlantean. And so his birthday is 7-7, so I'm going off on track. But um, yeah, I've forgotten what I was going to say now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were talking about the Lion's Gate coming up. I know there's so much energy and I want to talk about yes. Trump, you know, I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours and, um, you know, so Trump, let's talk about this because I, my cards never lie. You know, this is why I love tarot cards because there's really, they just tell you what's up in a very mundane way. I think it's like just black and white. And I knew Trump was going to be elected. I pulled the King of Pentacles about a hundred times. My husband and I had just met, we were actually had just met each other and he thought I was crazy. I'm like, no, 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 he's gonna get elected. And, and I said, he has a job to do, he's meant to be there. And the information, I'm very neutral politically. I mean, I really just don't engage and I, this is probably gonna get me in trouble, but I don't even vote. I mean, I just don't engage and it's just not my thing. It's very swords, it's very gray, it's very mental. It's just not, I'm not interested, however, I really did feel with Trump that he was meant to be in that space. And I felt like he was meant to be there. And I got two very specific messages in 2016 when he was elected, which was number one, he was going to haphazardly release a lot of information that there was going to be all this information that came because of whatever he was dismantling or tearing apart. Or I kind of got this message, like he's a bull in a China shop and he's got to go in and kind of break everything apart. And so I knew that that was something. Um, I also knew that he was going to challenge these systems and that he was also meant to be the mirror of all of us, that he really, like no one wanted to see their ugly stuff. And, and it had been very neutral. Like I felt like there was a lot of neutral energy over the last few years after 9-11. It suddenly, you know, it was I felt like Obama's pregnant, uh, presidency was very uh, neutral. Like it felt like there wasn't a whole lot of energy happening. Yeah, and so there's a reason was, for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think he was meant to be there. Trump was meant to be in there. And I, and I also felt, and, and this is something interesting because I did listen to um, your uh, video with all the women from the UK and you were talking about Mary Magdalene and the, the Mary energy and that's, a whole other thing that we could have a whole separate show about. Um, but I felt with Hillary, I, I feel very strongly that she's not aligned with feminine energy. She's not aligned with divine feminine. She doesn't embrace her femininity. And I told my husband, I said, no woman is going to elect a woman as a president who isn't aligned with her feminine self. The, if there will be a, a female president, if that even exists in the future, it will be the divine feminine. And so all of that was, you know, a while ago and I've watched everybody get angry and, and all of this negative energy. And it's hard to watch because I, I feel, you know, take a look at yourself, you know, regardless of what you agree with, wh whatever he's done right or wrong, like it's all just this judgment and this ego. And I'm like, that's exactly what you're supposed to be working on. Like, look at yourself. But I had a dream about Trump and, and you know, you shared this dream in, in one of your most recent videos that you had of Trump. And I honestly hadn't even thought of this Trump dream as a big deal until I heard your dream. And I thought, oh my God, I hadn't even thought. So I had this very lucid dream. And again, you know, there's lucid dreams and then there's lucid dreams. And I had this dream and I was standing in a room at the White House. And it wasn't the Oval Office, but it was just some room. And I was standing and there was Trump. And there were multiple people, you know, all the, the people around, you know, 
in their little suits and everything. And, and he was preparing for something. He had papers and he was preparing some kind of speech. There was something happening. And I looked at him and he looked at me and I said, we are here for you. It's time to go. And we all walked out onto the lawn of the White House and he walked up to the podium to talk. And then I was, boom, out of the stream. And so I, I would love, you know, I don't know if you want to share your dream again or what your thoughts are on all of this, but it just, you know, my husband and I have gone around and around because he's like, oh, he's doing these things, you know, that are hurting the planet. And there's these other things like, how do we know, you know, because my husband's analytical, which I appreciate because he makes me look at all these different things. But at the end of the day, I trust my information. And my information is telling me that for some reason we are supporting him and that he is meant to be there, that he has a job to do. It's really that simple. You know, for me, it's like, this is the information and, and I'm very neutral about it. So I don't have an opinion one way or the other, and I'm not on one side or the other. And so anyways, enough of that, but I just wanted to get your thoughts on that, which again, could be a whole other topic, but I do want to talk about it a little bit. <laughs> Wow, everything you say, you, you are triggering me. You know, I was saying about triggering each other. You're really triggering um, loads of downloads. And I, I wish I had got a pen and paper here so I could take notes because I didn't expect to be so <laughs> triggered with so many different things. I remembered what it was that I'd forgotten. And what that was is um, dates that have had flags of the false kind on them previously are being neutralized. So the same thing as reclaiming the symbolism, we are actually reclaiming those dates mm. right back for thousands of years, which is why we've got these huge um, repeating stargates. So 7-7 seven, seven here in the UK going back a few years was a London incident. And so 7-7, seven, seven, we're, we're having a purification going on. There will be a 911 purification in September, or it may not occur until 2021, 911. But these dates are all raising every single um, symbol, including numbers. So that's one thing that I remembered. So yeah, uh, regarding Trump, um, when I made the video about that dream, you wouldn't believe how many people contacted me. I mean, there were so many people, men, a lot of men, but mostly women, all having Trump dreams around the same time with similar, um, you know, similar outcome, him busy preparing paperwork, getting ready for something. And um, what you said about being a bull in a china shop, dismantling everything that the nine have said, what's going on behind the scenes with him hasn't come to light at all. And there are a little bit of clues coming in from the, um, uh, the, the letter in the alphabet that has that's a circle with a line in it. <laughs> yeah. um, there are some clues coming in there that are accurate clues coming in from from that sort of portal. But there's still an awful lot going on behind the scenes that hasn't come out yet. And it can't that can't come out for security reasons. So I'm not even told uh, what that is other than there's a lot going on. And it's, you know, for those who are in the movement that we are in of the light the service to uh, others movement these are potentially incredibly good um things that are going on that are tying things up but they will look terrible to the people who don't understand so everything he's going to do for the rest of this year is um the people who are not awake are going to just continuously have more and more reinforcement of how awful he is. But they're also going to be very, very confused because some of the things he does, they're going to understand how good it is. Mm -hmm. So they're going to think, well, he's doing these good things, but he's doing these really bad things and there's no relation. It doesn't add up. The star seeds, the truth is the awakened individuals who understand are going to be uh, very pleased when all of these things occur. You also mentioned um, the divine feminine and you mentioned the Hillary person. And I would agree that's not the divine feminine that she manif that she it, it's more of a Lilith uh, negative Lilith energy. So rather than rather than a dark Kali, which is a power all the divine feminine has a dark Kali aspect and when it's aligned, it's a power that you can actually sever the, the, the light goddess frequency and just embody the, the darker feminine aspect, which would be a negative Lilith frequency. 
Um, so it's not divine feminine in a service to others sense, but it would be seen as a divine feminine as in a service to self sense. They would see her as very much a divine feminine. Hmm. So it's not to us because, but to them, it's what they would want. So that energy is what they're going to use with this election, that energetic. Now it looks as though a, the, the election may not even go ahead. It's not set in the timelines that it will. And I've, no. said, yeah, I've said this for a while because these things that Trump are doing are going to cause so much repercussions. It may lead to an, a situation where an election can't go ahead when it's set. It may have to be postponed. It may have to be changed. People get worried when I say this because they think it means that Trump's not going to be president anymore. Um, there are many, many things going on and all sorts of different, um, as I said, repercussions. So it's not set in the timelines, but neither is it set in the timelines that it's not going to go ahead. It isn't a definite yet. If it does go ahead, it's very highly probable of one of two things. Either the person whose first name is Joe, who is running against him, <laughs> he one of two things will occur either at the last minute um something will happen and he's unable to run and there will be a replacement or he will run and his vice president will be the actual person who will actually become president because after winning something will happen and he'll have to stand down so joe is not going to be the president of the united states on a long-term basis on any timeline he's not the one he's like a decoy so I think what they would rather do is replace someone beforehand because that's going to give them more votes because they're going to play divine feminine. They're going to present the Lilith or rather she won't be Lilith. She will be someone who stands in Lilith's shadow and works for Lilith. She's not the queen. She'd be more like one of the ladies in waiting. We can't have the queen because the queen has blown it. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it has right. to be one of the ladies in waiting, but this is going to be potentially someone holding that divine feminine energy that they see, but inverting it so that the people who are asleep think she's divine feminine and think that she's the savior and the answer because she'll be doing things in her way, but she's still a voice for the deep state. But even people awake might be confused. Not many of them, most of them will know. Some might think, oh gosh, you know, she's saying some good things, but this is only one potential. This is, what, this is a high probability play out if the election goes ahead. But it's 50-50 as to whether it's, the pro whether it's the actual election going ahead with this replacement for joe who's holding this false divine feminine and she's a lady in waiting to lilith uh that's 50 50 with the election not occurring at all it's something to do with the voting system and the electronic voting system versus the posting system and something trump is doing regarding it and something the democrats are also doing and it's all coming into this big pot that could cause this huge issue um, so, yeah, that's that's not set. And of course, we have got so much going on. We've got the whole pathogenic thing and, um, you know, the the the, the um, pandemic kind of uh, um, play out uh, with all the people that believe it. And then, of course, you have also got the people being pitted against the people. So when it comes to the, the Maxine, mm -hmm. yeah, you've got... Um, those that know the truth and they're going to be engineered to look like they're causing a problem because they're refusing the vaccine and therefore herd immunity cannot be created because of these anti maxinas and the pro maxinas are going to be very, very angry and blame the pandemic situation and all of the restrictions and the fact that they can't go swimming and they can't go to the pub and they can't just get back to normal, they're going to blame it on the <laughs> vaccine. Having said that, herd immunity has already been reached in the majority of places. Already. 
Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. I have, there's so much I just want to share right now. And, um, I have some things I'm going to share, but I'm doing it off air. Sorry guys. Cause it's just so much of what you just said is some things that, whew, yes, yes, magenta. Yes. <laughs> there, there, I did. I know I didn't really mention Trump enough. Did I, you, did you want me to talk about the I think you went right where you meant to, you were meant to go. I mean, I think that's it. I mean, we are the dismantling. It just continues and it's, it's just, it's, I cannot believe how fast it's happening. I mean, I, you know, in my head, I thought, oh, I'll be, you know, in my seventies and, you know, then there'll be this thing. And here I am. I'm like, wow, this is like dead smack. And, you know, I, I, uh, the Dalai Lama is my guru and I, I followed him for seven years, you know, went to all these different teachings. And a couple of weeks ago, he looked into the camera live on YouTube and said, there's 7 billion people on this planet that need to wake up and become compassionate and have forgiveness. And I think when, when, a leader like that is saying the same things we are and the expectation is now is the time and we all came here to do it there is no time left there's just no time left like this is it like you're either in it to win it <laughs> or not i mean it's just you won't be here you'll be displaced you know i just keep getting like this is our our opportunity to be here and i'm seeing the split realities and and all of these you know interdimensional beings coming in to surround and support us and oh i yeah i mean i want to be respectful of your time and and everything and um i just so appreciate you coming on here i hope you come back i hope you come back and talk to me whenever you want to because honestly we have this whole beautiful community that is just so open and ready for information and connection and and affirmation you know we're all on this bus ride together to this new reality, you know? And I just keep seeing like, we are, are building a virtual community now, but it will become physical communities and there will be a way for us to connect and there will be a way for us to travel and to see each other. We will get through the darkness. Yes. Like, we'll get through the darkness because we'll become one with it, not because it goes away. Yeah, that's exactly it. And the nine have said about, this, um, these communities, these communities of light, if you want a breakaway societies, but it's not really a breakaway society, it's actually the new society. It'll be perceived as a breakaway society from those living in the false narrative. So it's a choice of polarity. It's like, where do you want to go? I mean, you and I have obviously made our choice. Multiple star seeds and truthers have made their choice. There are yet others to make that choice. That's what that second wave is, and they will. And then you know, when we come to the sort of around the end of this year and in, into early next year, um, and very much the Lion's Gate and hugely um, the winter solstice, the, 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 the December solstice. So we've got these huge pivotal Stargate points coming and eclipses and everything. People are continuously being guided towards the truth all the time even if they're completely asleep so we are going to have a new wave of awakeners people making that choice and when that is held in all of our consciousness everyone's thinking the same thing we're wor working with the law of attraction now you have got some people who don't understand the law of attraction so it's coming from frustration i don't want to go in this particular venue because it's full of social distancing and all the and disinfectant and i want to find somewhere that it isn't like that somewhere different if they're coming from frustration then they're not manifesting that reality for themselves they might find themselves in some frustrating situations but above that you have these aware individuals you have these star seeds that know they're not going to go places like that they are going to be guided to different places there will be innovation and creativity the likes of which has never been seen on this planet in our known history. The last time we had creativity and innovation at this level was Atlantis and before that Lemuria. And that is to do with how, how do we shop? How do we um, socialize? How do we share? How do we have entertainment? How do we produce music and um, 
the arts, culture, education, health, everything is transforming. But we're right at the beginning. That's why I say we're the founding fathers and mothers. We're right at the beginning. This is literally, a, we're only just past day one. I mean, and this is something that's going on for multiple, a whole new thousand year cycle cosmically. We're right at the beginning of it. And so it may look really, really dark and really, really troubling. And it, and it is. You know, there are people out there that are saying, we've won. We have won. And that is true from the higher dimensional perspective. We have. That's written. And for us to feel and know that we've won is creating it. But we must also be aware that in the third dimension and the lower fourth dimension, which is where we are, we haven't won yet. We haven't won yet. And so we must take both those perspectives. We must. If we, if we live within the fact that we haven't won, haven't won yet, we're in confusion, we're in despair and hopelessness. If we live in, we've won, we've won, we've won, we are kidding ourselves. We are not seeing the truth and we're going to slip up and fall into a trap because we think we've won when we haven't. We must have both. We have won. Yes, we have. It's true. That reality is there for us. It's in the higher dimensions and it's in the future. And our knowing of our winning is creating it. And we can live in that joy. And every day, it's so important to wake up as if it's happened and say, yes, the cabal have gone. We're free. Thank you. Go into the gratitude. But then come back to this time period, because we're living in multiple time periods when we do this work. Oh, we're still in the third stroke, lower fourth dimension right now, and we haven't won yet. Be realistic, but still be realistic with the higher dimensions. It's such a tough place to be. I remember when the nine taught me this way of thinking, this, this um, dual thinking, this, um, uh, they, they call it bilocational consciousness, when they first taught this to me, and that is the two world split. Trilocational consciousness is the three world split. Multilocational consciousness is the multi world split. That's all there, all of it. And then we have the infinite unification, which is no split, it's all unified, which is also what the star seeds are creating. So we've got to understand all of these. When the nine first taught me bilocational consciousness, I said, I can't do it. I had an argument with the nine. I said, You were asking me to do something I can't do. It's physically impossible. I can't do it. And I'd get frustrated with them. And they'd be really patient and they'd remain and they would say, you have all the tools to do this. If you want to create this reality, then that is the only way you can create it. There is no other way you can have this reality. That's how they would speak to me. I'd be like, oh, there's no other way. This is what you must do and you can and we will help you. But I had to do it myself. The nine could guide me, but I had to do it myself. So I'd go away and think, how can I get my head around? This is what I want, but I need to be happy with not having what I want. I need to realize that not having what I want is as wonderful as having what I want. I need to place them equally together. My genuine desire must be equal to not having that genuine desire. That is how you integrate and you do not work with resistance. That's how you take resistance away. We are doing this on a grand scale. All of those thousands, if not millions. I mean, I just don't know how many. I mean, I, I, the nine say it's more than you think. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we're all doing it across the world. There are so many people that have never, ever gone out and said a, a word about what they do and that they're a starseed. They're not on social media. They haven't written a book. They're not out there public, publicly speaking. I know because they, people write to me and I know that there are people who've never written to me who, who don't want to be known, but there are those who write to me and say, please let me stay anonymous. I don't want to be out there, but, and do you know what? These people are as connected as you and I and every other star said, they're way showers. They're doing the work in their private spaces. It's phenomenal. That sort of alliance of positively polarized individuals is phenomenal. And they're all working every day. How can we not succeed? Why would we fail? Why would we even be here if we were going to, to fail in this um, venture, in this mission? but we must be aware that we haven't won yet. 
because we need to be in the space of awareness and caution realize that the dark they still have power There's, they've still got some tricks up their sleeve mm -hmm. they're going to do things that we what we're not aware of and they also have ways of cloaking their plans just like we're cloaking ours Right, so right. something occurs and we think, oh gosh, of course, that's why they've done that. Why didn't I see it coming? Because they've, they've hidden it from our awareness. They know how powerful the star seeds are. It is so complex, this plan. It is so unbelievably unexplainable. It's so hard to put a word to it, but it is so perfect and so beautiful as well. And so many star seeds are keying into that energy and are understanding it. And, you know, those dreams, whether it's Trump or whether it's a higher dimensional entity, whoever it may be. And what I find really, really interesting about Trump dreams is I've had people who were wavering, not necessarily totally anti-Trump because they won't, I, I doubt they would have a Trump dream. And if they did, it wouldn't be an essence of him. It would be what the nine call a shade, which is a, a false Trump. <laughs> but <laughs> those who are wavering and aren't sure, they're getting Trump dreams that are actually changing their minds for them. So what, what's changing their minds about him isn't anything they read. It isn't anything they hear spoke. It's the dream. Hi, oh, you lost me again. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> these, these individuals, it's nothing they saw on, me, on, the, on the media. It's nothing they heard. It's nothing they read. It's the dream that changes their mind. And those who don't understand this awareness would say, why would you allow a dream to change your mind about a politician and something so important as the president? And what the aware individuals would know is the dream time is the most powerful. That is where you are accessing this wisdom. That is your, um, your subconscious aspect that's working everything out and looking at potentialities and probabilities and coming to aligned conclusions and going beyond that. You're moving into the knowing and the memory system that's outside of your being that you are in, on this planet. It's moving beyond that into multiple layers. So your dreams are so powerful. That's your two world split. You have got the two world split are two such vastly different ideologies and perspectives. And that's why so many of us who have known about the two world split have thought, how can we coexist on the same planet? Well, we are, we're coexisting physically, but ideological wise and perspective wise and paradigm we are so far worlds apart that it causes cognitive dissonance when one person from one side reacts in a certain way to those who are... I spoke to somebody who's newly awakened this week. So I'm giving you an example. And I said about how um, people who want the Maxine, the pro Maxines, are angry with the anti Maxiners. And she said, but why? She couldn't understand their perspective because she's so locked into the awareness of being awake because she's aware, she knows the truth, she understands what's going on it's, and she's newly awakened. So it's very difficult for her to remember what it was like to be yeah. asleep. I'm able to do it because I've ha had longer being awake and I've had more time to tune in on what it's like to still be asleep. So I can understand where they're coming from. And vice versa. Obviously, we understand why those who are asleep don't understand the awake ones. So we have extreme confusion to one another's perspective, mm -hmm. not understanding it at all. Now, that is what the service to self individuals are utilizing to turn humanity against one another. But that same thing is what is awakening humanity at the same time. <sighs> Thank you so much. That's, I mean, it's the amazing thing about the split realities or the split world is that you can see it when you go to a grocery store, you go out in public right now. It's absolutely clear the division between yes. who's living in one reality and who's living in the other, who's awake and who's still in the systems. And, and it's, if you want to practice integration, I think go to a grocery store. I mean, <laughs> when I have to go do that, my mission is by the end of this year, I don't want to have to go to one. I actually want to have everything 
direct and different. Um, so I'm working on that for my family. But um, yes. when you go and you see that, it's like this, it's like I have to take a deep breath. It's like, whew. Like, yes. cause you're seeing and, and you see the struggle and the suffering on both sides of, you know, the, the challenges and, and the, the issues and also the light and the, the desires and all these things, you know, with these different ways of living and thinking and experiencing. And it, it, it's really like the separation, you know, and that's where yes. unification is everything. Unification and integration and crystallization, whatever word you want to use, it's, that is what we have to, it, there is no other option. No. And it's, I think the aware individuals, if you're in a space where you don't have to wear a mask or anything, then it's um, easy to forget because you know that you're not, you are not at risk by going out. You know that there is no threat in that sense. We have reached herd immunity. You're aware of everything. So you can actually forget. My mm -hmm. husband said he went to the store yesterday and he was just, there weren't that many people in and he was walking around and then he saw the arrow and it reminded him. He said, oh gosh, there's an arrow. Oh yeah, we're in the middle of, uh, you know, and he'd forgotten because we don't live in that awareness. We don't live in the reality of threat and danger and pandemic and all of the rest of it. So yeah, um, yeah. it's easy to forget. Uh, uh, and that's what I mean about star seeds finding where they need to go and um, knowing that if you go to a place where that's in your face, it isn't something that's going to align with an aware individual. The newly awakened sort of truth of fourth dimensional individuals will get angry and you may come across people shouting in places, get your masks off and, and you know, uh, they're, they're annoyed and you can understand their perspective because they're aware, but they haven't raised in sort of a spiritual understanding. And those who are spiritually aware just simply won't want that coming into their reality in any meaningful or profound or, um, you know, high amount of, of sense. They won't want that to, to occur um, a lot. But obviously, sometimes we have to. And I know that there are countries where you've got to wear a mask if you want to go in a store. Mm -hmm. Now, this is OK. But a lot of people ask me, knowing about the mask and it being a sign of acquiescence and also a symbol of slavery to that Borg machine, your eye just fell down. I know. It's, <laughs> it's doing its own thing. We're... we're... <laughs> We're wrapping okay, the indigo cool. eye back cool. here. It's like it's, it's got a living consciousness and it's letting me know that it's watching and everything. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Um, but yeah, what I wanted to say, and I think obviously it's moved. This is, this is important and many people have asked me this. Wearing a mask is a sign of slavery to that Borg machine. So does it mean if you put it on, you are willingly giving yourself into that, that sort of um, system? No. Not if you do it like this. <laughs> so it's your intention. If you're like, oh no, I have to wear a mask. It means I'm part of the Borg machine and I'm giving, I'm, I'm acquiescing to, I, I'm, I'm telling the new world order, yes, I want you. I don't want to put it on and, and it's all sort of resistance and fear. No, this is how you do it. You are going to exercise stealth. You are going in disguise. You are a powerful way shower, a powerful star seed. You are fully aware of the game, but on this one occasion, you are going in disguise. You put your mask on as a disguise. Therefore, you are not acquiescing to anything. You are not using it as a symbol of becoming a slave to the Borg machine. You are using it as a symbol of being in disguise. That's the intention you hold. No, you will not be helping that system if you hold that intention. So that's the way to do it when you have to and you have no choice. Another way of doing it to raise the vibration even higher is find a mask that's meaningful to you. If you're in resistance to masks, you're not going to be able to do this. And yes, we don't want to wear a mask, but there are ways. For example, do you want a pink one, a purple one, a black one? Do you resonate with different colors? Do you want one made of eco-friendly material? Do you want it to be handmade? Did you make it yourself? Has your child drawn a picture on it for you? Make it personal. Try your best to find a way to align with it. But this is about intention. And it's okay to be in disguise right now. In fact, in certain circumstances, it's important to be in disguise so that you 
are not targeted when there is an attack in that area where you are. This is about moving with the energy and being sensible and careful. There's a time to speak up and shout out and show your indigo power and stand up and say no more. And there is a time to be in disguise and move with the crowd so that you don't put yourself in a position of risk or danger. So that's how to play it. It's maneuverability and be, that's being shamanic. You're a shamanic shapeshifter. That's what you need to think when you put it on. I'm a shamanic shapeshifter today. Today I'm in disguise. So that's, that's the way to do it, to not buy in to that system because you're gonna take it off as soon as you possibly can you're not, you know, and uh, health wise, you don't want to keep it on for long. It's not a good idea to keep it on for long. Yep. Agreed. And and I think what you're saying is it resonates with everything. And it's so important because, you know, you can still, they're, they're, that operating within the shadows, you know, that's a, that's a practice, you know, it's yeah. a practice for sure. And there's a beautiful YouTube video on the high wire Oh my God. I don't know who Dr. Zach is, but it brought my husband and I to tears. So if you're looking for clear information on what exactly is going on and, and how to manage your immune system like that, that, that interview on the high wire is like, it's mind blowing. And I think it's had like 2 million views now. I mean, it was really, it's really gone you know, out to many people and explains all of that because yeah, I mean, our immune systems, like we're going to be sick from the common cold from all this isolation. So, and there's a re you know, there's reasons that's all. Yes, you know, absolutely. Created, so. if, you, if you have pets, you can actually connect with your pets and still access because we access our immunity through our consciousness, but also through our physical body. So hugging and touching that assists with our immunity if you have pets you can access that as well from cuddling your dog your cat um and you know so there are ways to still hold that immunity um even in an isolation state so yes well and getting outside as much as possible we have four kids so i feel like there's no way like yeah. we just let them continue to play and do their thing and i think it you know it helps build that immunity for all of us and, and sending them to school yeah yeah. No. Uh, yeah. They have not been at school since no. March and it's looking a lot like they may not ever go back the, mm. you know, that way again. And I, I think I'm actually okay with that. You know, as, yeah. as challenging as it is to manage all this stuff, um, having everybody home and, and really seeing like the shift and, uh, you know, they go to a charter school. So it's even more fascinating to talk about that because we've come across information, you know, with the systems, you know, trying to take those away and, and trying to make changes in that as well. So, oh. I know there is um, obviously a huge aspect to this attempted planetary takeover to the education system and to the children, but parents, aware parents can come together and create new ways uh, we, the, the nine say there's always a back door no matter how much they try to um pull us down isolate us take everything away that is natural and good and uh, and right for us no matter how much they do that there's always a back door that's what they say and i know it's difficult to believe sometimes but there's always going to be a way to maneuver to find that that's why they make a move, we make a move. They, we make a move, they make a move. That's why it's this polarity. But we have this huge light structure. And if, you are, if you're anti-Trump and you hate Trump and you're in resistance to Trump, I understand that. But I would urge you to just take a second look. Just take a second look at Trump and, and what he stands for and what he's doing. If you are completely closed to it, I doubt you're even watching this interview. And if you are, you'll be triggered as anything and be leaving dreadful comments. That's cool. But if you are one of these waverers who isn't sure, who doesn't really like him and thinks he's dreadful, but maybe there's a chance he's okay, then you are in a situation to be able to take a second look. Meditation, dreams, um, use your intuition. You, the truth will be given to you. It's if you, if you ask for truth and you live within truth, you will find truth. So 
take a second look. No one's forcing you to believe something. Just be open. And because obviously if this election does go ahead in November, and as I said, that's not set in the timelines, it's crucial, crucial for our moving forward into the new earth and for our ascension that President Trump wins. And obviously going into the reasons for that is a whole other interview but yeah. that is the situation that is the situation absolutely regardless of who this person is that steps in um to take joe's place and regardless of how beautiful she may be or or how famous she is or or how lovely she seems it makes no difference it's still the borg machine even if she doesn't look like part of it it's crucial that trump wins the american election and I'm not saying that to get him votes because I'm political, because I'm in the UK. <laughs> and yeah. it makes no difference to me on a political level anyway, because I'm not even in America. And like you, I'm not into politics. I don't even really like politics. Mm -hmm. It's not something I'm into. But spirituality and ascension and the whole situation, politics is right in there. So yeah. if you are someone who's aware and awake or a channel, a clairvoyant, psychic, empath, you are going to be looking at this stuff. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I have so much more I want to talk to you about. So I hope we get to talk again soon. It's really- well, we, we can, or you could join one of the collective um, like groups that you know we're having all these sort of uh, three people, four people coming together I to would do like love round it. tables. Yeah, if you I join- I would love it. And um, I'm going to stop the recording. I have something. Do you mind staying on? Yeah, I'll stay. <laughs> bottom part out, but I have, I just want to share with you, but um, so let, me do that. let me do that. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Stop the recording.